1200 Films Podcast, Truck Loaf, all whore all the time, and it is my body, my choice. We got some real winners on this one. Later in the show, we're going to talk about boners in movies. Uh, there's a reason, Shudder, uh, but we'll get to that later. But um, with the, let's start with the rating scale. Of course, on the very bottom, dumpster fire, filth, garbage. Then we can't, can't quite recommend. Okay, if desperate, put it on the watch list. Put it on top of the watch list. Ding, ding, ding. Let's go. First film, 1981, the year of our Lord, 1981. Butcher, baker, nightmare maker. Also known as Night Warning. Why these films have to have two names. A lot of these films today have multiple names and I do not know why. Give it a title. Stick with it. Critic rating 92%. Audience score 61. This film was unique and bizarre. So this aunt kills the parents so she can adopt this little boy that she's smitten over the little boy is two years old and and then it fast forward several years later this boy is a teenager and he's growing up and he's about to leave to go to college and auntie crazy auntie is like no 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 i think they didn't come out come out and say it but there had to be some kind of sexual thing going on between the auntie obsessing about her, her, her nephew slash son because uh, she would <laughs> when he would wake up in the morning sometimes she would be right there rubbing his chest wake up honey <laughs> and um well he, he eventually got a girlfriend and that drove the, the aunt crazy and that's how this movie got unraveled Usually when I see a movie like this and I see two main characters I've never heard of or seen of before, I usually look into it to see who the hell they are. The boy was played by Jimmy McNichol, who was like Mr. Teen Thing of 1979. Did a couple things and then just poof, vanished. Just disappeared, just, just quit the whole thing. The crazy auntie, who was not even 40 years old in this film, she looked 60. But she has done a billion films. She passed away recently, sadly. But she did a lot of movies. She was in Big Top Pee Wee. She was in Cry Baby with Johnny Depp. She was in Powder. And she was in a really bizarre film called Motorama. I could do a whole show on Motorama. I hadn't seen this since I was probably 14. And uh, the main character is about that same age, a boy about that age. And he's, he leaves home, runs away, and he's driving this car. He's got a couple hundred bucks to his name, and he's just driving, just driving, driving across the country. And he meets some weird and fascinating people along the way. Some are nice, some not so nice. But it's got a really bizarre, interesting, fascinating cast. And I just rewatched it. You know what? It holds up. Maybe not quite as well. But the, the ending, I totally forgot. But yeah, that's another one to put on the non horror watch list Motorama. But anyway, yeah, she's, she's just the, the Susan Tyrell's done a few. Um, on to the next one. Uh, what's my rating? Okay, if desperate. Uh, 1988. Edge of the X. No critic rating. Audience score of 30%. I could tell immediately this was trying to be like a like a super everything slasher film. In the very first two seconds of the film, they're at a car wash. And you see the actor Keith David. I was like, oh, well, this got Keith David. It can't be that, man. He's pretty 
pretty. This is like right at this about the same time he was in They Live with Roddy Piper. He had that big long fight scene in the alley with Roddy Piper. That's probably what I most remember Keith David for doing. But he's still alive, still acting, still working. But um, and that was but that was that was all he did in this film. Two seconds, one scene, one shot, no dialogue. It was done. Oh. None of these characters are likable in this film. Uh, there's a slasher loose in town. One of the side stories, which was kind of interesting, this girl, this guy was into this girl, and the guy was big into commu computers, so he got her a computer, and they were chatting via the internet in 1988. It's fascinating. But other than that, you can skip this one. Uh, dumpster fire garbage. Um, next one, 2020. I originally said this was called Monster Land. It's called Monster Hunter. I I'm, apologize. Monster Land is a Hulu series, which I've seen a few episodes. It's not bad. But Monster Hunter is stars that chick from the Resident Evil movies. It has a critic rating of 47% and an audience score of 70. It's exactly what you think it is. Big budget, over-the-top, giant monsters. It kind of reminds me of Clash of the Titans, more or less, but with a chick. That's your thing. Go for it. Okay, if desperate. Ron Perlman co-starred. He's looking more and more like a middle-aged lesbian every day. Next film... 2017 I Kill Giants critic rating 78% audience score is 74 uh, the cover art for this is deceptive you think you're getting at the at the least kind of a sci-fi adventure horror but you're not it's this team with issues it's a teen issue movie. There are some kind of intense scenes with the monsters she's making up in her head in the distance. I don't know who wrote this review, but I thought it was pretty good. This sums it up pretty well. It's not Donnie Darko, but it may delight the weirdo, nerdo tween in your life. Exactly. It's for girls. It's for chicks that are going through stuff mm -hmm. uh, can't quite recommend it's just not for me next one oh my god 1990 Shockma 5.1 out of 10 on IMDB you have no idea how difficult this was to find on IMDB you type in Shockma as in the title of the film and the first thing that shows you is Pro Wrestler Shock Master. You scroll all the way down that list, there is no Shockma movie. But apparently, another one of these stupid movies that have multiple titles, it's also called Panic in the Tower. Now, if you go to IMD and type in Panic in the Tower, click enter, you know what it takes you to? Shockma. Shockma gives you Shockmaster, but Panic in the Tower gives you Shockma. Uh, anyway, this these nerds in this building, there's some kind of school or something, but they got a bunch of monkeys and they got a baboon and the baboon gets injected with something or other and it goes crazy. This baboon's the size of a small infant. I don't know why you can't just grab it and throw it against the wall and be done with it, but no. It goes on this killing spree and no one can stop it. It's literally 10 pounds. What? I don't know. I guess I've never faced square off with a 10 pound baboon. I don't know. But, um, it is what it is. It's silly, silly horror. 
okay if desperate. Uh, 2021 Slacks. It's spelled S L A X X X X. Maybe one more X. Critic rating 97%, audience score 45. When I saw the premise, it was, a, it was about killer jeans. Like, killer pair of slacks. Jeans. Yes. That's that's the killer in this film. Was, I guess that's why it's called slacks. Uh, but these horrible, unlikable characters working in this, I guess, it's kind of like a Amber Crombie type store. They're all awful, but they... Are, are getting killed left and right so that made it kind of enjoyable the the, the slacks are like uh, haunted by the the workers and whatever poor country that made them and so put a curse on these this particular piece of cotton so when these slacks were made he starts killing people how does it kill people it chokes them or crams itself down their throat or whatever but it does the trick and um, it's better than I expected uh, I still can't say put it on the watch list but we'll see it's okay it's desperate it's, it's fine fine next one 2020 let it snow no critic rating audience score 38 so this uh, happy couple who like to have adventures are going on one of this, like a snowmobiling, skiing adventure, and they want to go to the to the to the evil bad mountain where no one's allowed to go because they want to have adventures. Everyone and their mothers and sisters say, "Don't go there. It's bad news. We can go to all these other places. Oh no, no, we want to go to the the devil's pit, devil's pubes, or whatever it's called. I don't know." So they go out the, they're at the devil's pit, and then they're, and all of a sudden one gets killed off, and the other one's getting stalked, and that's this film. Uh, again, it's simple, but you know what? It was effective. I'd say put it on the watch list. It was fine, very fine, maybe better than fine. Uh, but I watched it again. Probably not. Next one. It is our feature review, Stay Out of the Boo Attic. It is four times your rate. It is imperative that the move happen tonight. The basement and the attic are not your concern. This shit is creepy. Yo, boss, come here, man. What you find? Holocaust experiments. Stay out of the beeping attic. Some places have the effing in there. Some places you'll find this it doesn't. But um, IMDb it has it in there. Is the is the eff stay out of the effing attic? Critic rating twenty five percent. Audience score is seventeen. I cannot believe it's so low. So this three person moving company are giving this big chunk of money to move this guy out of this house, this big house. In one day, and they're plugging along, and they, but they start digging and snooping, and they find out that the guy living there is one of the last living Nazis, and he's a doctor, and he is no good. Well, the Nazi doctor just happened to have cameras in every room, and was watching these people dig through his stuff, and says, uh-oh, can't let them out, so he puts the house on lockdown and starts killing, torturing them one by one. That's the premise of stay out of the effing attic. The the, the the old Nazi I could have sworn was an actor called Doug Hutchinson who played Percy from the Green Mile and was also in a early, early, early season one episode of X-Files. But it was not. I was mistaken. It is a familiar actor, parent, because I've seen it before. He was... Actually, Michael Flynn, who was in Halloween 4, he played the deputy. Hmm. Fun facts. That's what I'm here. I watch too many of these films, and sometimes my actors 
and actresses get crossed and mixed up. Okay, I would definitely put this on on on, on the watch list. Probably not on top of the watch list, but it's good enough to go on the watch list. Okay, boners and films. So the Shutter decided to put out two movies back to back. Both of them had boners, actual male boners, on screen. Uh, one was called un. Both were bad. One was called Untamed. Uh, one of the f- three or four stories going on in this film is there's an alien locked up in a shack, kind of. And there's these other stories going on, but they hardly ever get to the alien in the shack. And I got it about an hour in. It's like really, this is soap opera garbage. Where's the alien? So I gave up, but there was there was a quick shot of a boner in in that one. And then there was violation. Violation decided to show you a lot of a boner. This movie could have been good. I think they finished the film. And they realized they only had an hour of film, so they decided to use about 30 minutes of nature B-roll footage just to fill in the gaps. It's basically a revenge film of this girl that gets raped. So she seduces the guy, and that's where you see the boner. And then um, <laughs> and she puts the bag over his head and hits him on the back of the head and tries to kill him and it's not so easy killing people apparently because <laughs> this scene went on and on and on and on and she's just trying to do whatever she can to kill this guy yeah there was uh, full on boners there's been several boners in horror films that I can remember over there Stranger by the Lake had a boner it was no good skip it um, there was one good film that I can think of that had a boner that showed full penis male erection that I would say is, is worth watching. It's called Found. This is about this, basically about these two brothers. One's like 12 and the other one's like 17, 18. I'm guessing and um... The little boy, the, the little brother starts digging through his brother's stuff and finds like this m- backpack of murder, mur- like a murder kit, of, like rope and a knife and all this stuff. And one day he goes out following his brother at night and sure enough, his brother's killer. Well, later on in the film, there's a rapey rape scene, a bloody rape scene. And then you see the, the older brother walking down the hall and he's got a full Full boner, full boner. He's up there. He's 100% hard. But then it takes a shot at the uh, the, the little boy crying in bed because he's tied up. And then it goes back to the older brother. And he no longer has a boner. It's it's hanging down. It's, you know, not, I probably say semi-hard, but it somehow got twice as thick and twice as long (sighs) so for whatever reason they decided to add a prosthetic into this film when they already filmed a real boner which I'm slamming this movie because of this scene but even though I I just said it's a good movie it is a good movie but this scene I'll remember it (laughs) because it's so dumb if you're gonna show boner or penis or whatever Either go all real. Violation went all real. Still a bad movie. God bless them. But they went all real. Boogie Nights with Mark Wahlberg went all fake. You got to do one or the other. You can't show one shot of it real. And the next shot of it fake. Especially if it quadruple in size. In violation, when um, 
the, the guy with the boner when he was he was hard at one point and then he was as he was getting killed you know what his his dick didn't get four times bigger as he was it was as he was not hard anymore it it shrank as it should <laughs> yep that's my uh thesis on boners and horror films okay next on the show we'll have a wonderful array of films one called Baccarat, which is a foreign film, which the guys from Horror Movie Podcast recommended. Then one called Blood Moon, one of the new Nicolas Cage one called Willie's Wonderland. Then an old, old, old film called Leopard Man. And then an old trauma movie called Mother's Day. And then a newer one called The Power. And then one called Boys from County Hell. Boys from County Hell sounds like it should be about a documentary about a film about underage boys in county jail, but it's not. It's a I think it's a vampire vampire type deal, something or other like that. But we'll dig into that later. So until next time, boing, 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 boing.